Hi, my name is Dr. Rupali Chandar. My name is Dr. Murray Brightman. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Watkins. When we look up to the sky, what we mainly see are stars. The sun is a star that we all know about. These stars are relatively close to us and they exist within our own galaxy, the Milky Way. If we look beyond our own neighbourhood stars and look much deeper into space, we actually eventually start seeing the light from distant galaxies. Other galaxies are made up of many, many stars. So the difference between uh, galaxies and stars is that essentially stars make up a galaxy. So a spiral galaxy is one type of galaxy. Um, it consists of um, a few constituent parts. There's what we call the disk, that's a very flat, plane-like uh, structure. And then you have the bulge, which is a very central concentration of stars in the middle of the galaxy. And then you have the, the defining feature, which is the spiral arms of the, of the spiral galaxy, that gives it its name. These arms are made up out of stars, dust and gas. The dust are these really dark lanes in the spiral arms. So in the same way that uh, planets orbit uh, the Sun in our solar system, the stars in our galaxy orbit around the centre of, of our galaxy. And that's the same for all spiral galaxies. Messier 74, also known as the Phantom Galaxy due to the wispy structures within, is a spiral galaxy 30 million light years away. Now that sounds like a lot, but in the grand scheme of things and in the scale of the universe, it's actually relatively close by. It is a really interesting galaxy to study because it turns out it's a lot like our own Milky Way. Um, it has about 100 billion stars in it, lots of gas and dust, um, and it has these very intriguing spiral arms where young massive stars are forming, basically right now. So stars have different temperatures and uh, the temperature determines uh, what wavelength the stars are seen in. For the most part, um, they put out a lot of light um, in the optical or visible. Low mass stars, even lower mass than our sun, actually put out most of their light in the infrared, while massive stars put out most of their radiation in the ultraviolet. Dust is everywhere in space, but most of the dust we see are in galaxies where it's formed. We have to go to the infrared to actually see dust glowing and putting out its own light. Uh, and that's because dust is not very hot. In the visible and ultraviolet, basically dust looks dark. You can see dust only because it is blocking the light of sources that are emitting behind it. So when you compare the HST visible image to JWST, those dark lanes now shine brightly and are filled in, we can actually see more of the features such as rings, filaments, and cavities. These rings are actually super bubbles, super because they're so large. So when you look at an x-ray image of M74 opposed to the visible image of M74, it looks a lot different. You just see a handful of dots and that's because um, the x-ray image is only showing the black holes and neutron stars in the galaxy. So these are some of the most extreme objects in the universe. And so imagine you have a black hole and it's orbited by a, a nearby star. The black hole or the neutron star, it steals away material from the star and as it in spirals in, it gets hotter and hotter. It goes past the ultraviolet and it gets hot enough that it just emits in x-rays. So when you look at the collection of images of, of the Phantom Galaxy, you can see um, different sizes of images and different uh, details in the images. This is because they're taken at different telescopes and at different wavelengths. Typically, the larger the telescope, the higher the resolution, but the lower the field of view. 
The Hubble Space Telescope and JWST have very high resolutions. The Spitzer Telescope is an infrared telescope similar to JWST, but it is much smaller in size. Its resolution as a result is around 10 times lower, but its field of view is much larger. The Micro Observatory Network have very small telescopes, six inches in size, but because they are so small, their field of views are huge. The James Webb is the largest facility we have ever launched into space. It's, it's quite impressive. Um, and that large aperture, that large collecting area, allows us to see this galaxy and others in unprecedented detail. So what was just hinted at with Spitzer now comes into sharp, detailed relief with James Webb. My favorite thing about the Phantom Galaxy is all of the beautiful structures which were revealed when JWST took its first images of M74. Bubbles and filamentary networks in such exquisite detail. And I remember looking at it for the first time and it was just truly breathtaking. I am an X-ray astronomer. I'm interested in the X-ray sources. And one of my favorite things about X-ray sources and galaxies are what we call ultra-luminous X-ray sources. These are very powerful X-ray sources, power more powerful than they really should be. One of my favorite moments in studying the Phantom Galaxy was looking at the newly released James Webb Space Telescope images. So it's just an incredible view that I never had imagined before. It is teaching us new things about the processes that are shaping the Phantom Galaxy. Have you ever wanted to make your own astronomy image? Make sure to share your image with us. We want to see what you've done. Tell us about the colors you've picked. Were your choices scientific, artistic, or both? 